Don't mark her. We want a good price for the girl. He will give you wisdom. For your consideration, this beautiful young maiden. Play along, or you'll get the whip. Perfect for house slave, or work at the temple. Who will give me 15? 15. 18. Her looks are worth more than 18. 20. 25 for the girl. 25 denarii from the lady. She's probably not worth it, but 30. Do I hear any other bids? 35 denarii. 40! 40. 40 denarii! You don't get a higher bid than that. Excellent. Final bid. And... I will give you 50 denarii. Thank you. Take her then. My cows are worth more than she is. Sold. Your name, sir. Polycar. Thank you. Bring out the next girl. Ah, you must buy. You must. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. Pretty, but no. Lena, my dear. So, it was enough? The Lord provided. Well, I, um, must be about my work. This is my husband, Elias. So, what do they call you, child? We mean you no harm. My name is Germanicus. I could pick a name for you. Anna. Welcome to our home, Anna. We won't keep you from your work. This, this will be your room.
Friends, it is by the grace of God that we are all here tonight. We are gathered for a very special occasion. Anna, welcome to our home. We would have you share our work and our provisions, but not as a slave, as a member of our family. Anna, tonight you have received your freedom from slavery. Likewise, we have been delivered from the bondage of sin and through the perfect love of God have been welcomed into his family. Yes. Welcome, child. Quadratus, am pleased to offer the citizens of Smyrna the opportunity to show your devotion to Rome and our emperor. I set forth a new proclamation that all will be devoted to our beloved Caesar by offering incense and proclaiming him as your Lord and your God. May the gods go with you, and may Caesar be exalted. Justin. Oh, greetings, Maximus. Your presence has been missed among our garrison. Now that is hard to believe. <laughs> so now Caesar's a god. The proconsul should be more concerned about pleasing the people than Rome. He's only seeking fame and good fortune for our city. Mm. And what if the people don't comply? Quadratus has a way of getting what he desires. He may find it's more difficult than he believes. Be careful, Justin. Times are changing. Quadratus will just make the worship of Caesar law. He can't mandate worship. The priests call it allegiance to Rome. We must leave Smyrna. Do you think it will come to that? We can continue our work better if we are not in prison. But what of our work here? We, we can't just abandon it. Let us give this matter some time and prayer. God will show us what to do when the time comes. Well, what have we here? Nourishment that God has provided. Thank you, dear. Demetrius, time to eat. Germanicus, back so soon? I ran the whole way. <laughs> there are some things worth giving your life for, but you don't have to kill yourself for a simple message. For Quadratus, when you have recovered. I'll take it right away. Eat some food before you go. All right. <laughs> what is He'll learn. Perhaps when he has attained my years, he will acquire some of my <clears throat> sensible pace. <laughs> Chores are less burdensome when done in company. Greetings, Melita. Sarah, I have your order ready. Fresh pick this morning. Thank you. That necklace has a story behind it. You should ask Polycarp about it. Why will you not share it with me? 
It is his story to tell. How are you, Sabina? Why, who do you have with you? This is my new daughter, Anna. Well, what can I get for you today? The usual, two loaves. And how about a piece of sweet bread for a sweet girl? Many thanks. We love God because he first loved us. And the love that we share with one another is the love that we have received from God himself. The perfect example of that love is Jesus Christ who laid down his life for us so that we also ought to lay down our lives for one another. Does that mean we have to die? Well, at the very least, we must die to ourselves in order to serve one another in love not neglecting the widow, the orphan, the poor, and the fatherless. We ought to speak of our faith boldly and without wavering. The blessed Paul taught us that we are to pray without ceasing. So let us make intercessions and supplications and thanksgiving, especially for those in authority, even Caesar, even the proconsul, that we may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness as is pleasing to God, who would have all men come to the knowledge of the truth that we now hold, that there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, Jesus Christ, who gave his life a ransom for all. And now may the grace and peace and love and joy of our God be with you richly now and forever. Amen. 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 I don't believe in the gods. I don't believe in the gods either. I've prayed many times. My words hang empty in the air. There is a God who answers prayer. He's never answered mine. Merely water. I suppose I'll live. <laughs> Why were the soldiers here? Oh, it seems the proconsul desires my company. Will you go? Yes. I believe I will. He is causing more trouble for himself. The proconsul seeks the favor of Rome, however misguided. The heart of the king is like a river in the hand of God, and he turns it as he will. I shall be a moment.
was about his age when Polycarp took me in. Just as rambunctious. <laughs> Germanicus? Hmm. Were you a slave? No. My parents died of illness that winter. If the Christians hadn't taken me in, I might not have survived that year. Polycarp was a slave once. He was? Back when he was but a boy. I can't imagine anyone ordering him around. Someone is trying. I would have your final answer soon. If it's a different answer you seek, I fear you will be disappointed. One can always hope. And one can always pray. It seems all you do is copy skulls one from another. Don't you write anything of your own? Well, sometimes I do. Mostly, I copy writings of the apostles, my mentor, John. What does he need so many copies for? For those who have none. Polycarp used to travel, but now he writes, and we run. I wish I could be a runner. You must be swift and strong, like me. Perhaps one day you will be. Sister, why the long face? Is it your parents? They don't understand. And every time I try to explain, it doesn't come out right. I'm scared. Scared to even talk about God in their presence anymore. You can't let what others think keep you silent. Has Irenaeus arrived yet? Indeed. Not moments ago. Irenaeus. Ah. Ah. How good it is to see you, my brother. Likewise, <laughs> likewise. There is a shadow approaching us quickly, and we must be ready. So we worship Caesar or else? It will be beatings and prison if ridicule is not enough. Well, we faced persecution before. We'll face persecution again. We should leave Smyrna for a time. There are many cities that have yet to hear the gospel. We should seek peace. Now is no time to run. We should speak truth with, with boldness. God has blessed us with homes here. 
with, with livelihoods here, with friends here. God may be leading us in different paths. We must discern his plan and obey, no matter the cost. If you should choose to leave, I invite each of you to join me in Ephesus. Whatever the Lord's will is, we will glorify him in what we do, wherever we are, whether we are here or there. But understand this, we will not be constrained by what Quadrata says or does. Our only constraint is the love of Christ. Almighty God, Lord of principalities and powers and every living creature, give us wisdom for this hour. Show us the path we are to take. Time to go, my sweet daughter. There are so many stars. Have you ever tried to count them? No one can manage that. God can. God can not only count them, he has a name for every single one of them. He knows your name too. Good. We'll be ready to eat soon. <laughs> A great meal starts with an empty stomach, not a full one. <laughs> <laughs> God go with you, my brother. If you find yourself on the road to Ephesus, look for the sign of the fish. There's someone here to see you. Please, bring him in. Quadrata seeks his answer. It is not to be found within these walls. The Proconsul desires peace among our people. A desire we both share. And you will persuade them. I will persuade them. I will persuade them to worship the one true God and to worship him alone.
my thanks. Caesar is powerful. At least give thoughts to my words. That I will. And you give thought to mine. What was that all about? I've known Maximus a long time. And despite everything I've told him, he is still convinced his gods are real. What makes your god any more real than his gods? Now that is a good question. Those gods were made by hands of men. They have eyes, but cannot see. Ears, but cannot hear. Mouths, cannot speak. Our God sees all things. Hears our every prayer, and his word endures forever. The true God made the hands of men. Can you not sleep, my child? Come. Hmm. Tell me. What is on your mind? I don't understand. God loves us. Ah, well, no one fully can. The first person to teach me about God's love was a very kind Christian woman named Callisto. She purchased me as a slave, but brought me into her home and raised me as a son. Her very life was a testimony of God's love. That necklace you wear once belonged to her. She gave you your freedom? Yes. Yes, she, she did. When I came of age, I went to study under the Apostle John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. <laughs> he taught me much about God's love. He used to say, my dear children, let us love one another, for love is of God. If it weren't for God's love, I would not be here. And I was 
exposed then, you would not be here either. Uh, that should be enough to think about for one night. Christians, if you are listening, thank you for bringing me here. Sisera, come here, my son. Wait here. I'm glad you happened upon us. We came to show our devotion to Caesar as a family. You're welcome to join us. We must honor Caesar, not worship him. Caesar is no god. Ah, the innocence of youth. You say that Caesar is not a god. Caesar, there is only one true god. <laughs> Come, lad, there is no one more powerful on earth than Caesar. No one more thoughtful, more forgiving, more generous to those that show him their allegiance. He is only a man, not a god. The words you speak are akin to treason against Rome. There are no traitors in my house. Caesar is Lord. Now, my naive lad, what will it be? I certainly don't see your true God anywhere.
Germanicus. My son. Here. about Cicero today. You gave good counsel. Yeah, when pressed, I turned and ran. A shame to stand for my lord. I thought I was strong enough to, to withstand adversity. We are weak. In our own strength, we fail. It is only by God's grace that we can do that which does not come to us naturally. I don't deserve his grace. None of us do. That's why it's grace. <laughs> Peter denied our Lord three times on the day of his trial, yet God used him mightily. I, uh... I often struggle with fear. You? You struggle with fear? <laughs> Why do you think I speak so much of God's grace? Why do you think I speak so much of God's love? I don't know. Because perfect love casts out fear. My weakness is a constant reminder to me of my continual need to rely on Christ. Why don't we pray? He wants to hear from you. Why do you not act like you're worshiping Caesar? When I was a slave, I had to act all the time. I would not have others mistake my acting as true devotion to another. We are to share God with others, not hide him. It's easier said than done.
Therefore, gird up your loins. Serve the Lord in fear and truth. Stop listening to the empty, frivolous chatter of the crowd. Believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory and a throne at his right hand. Do you claim your God to be greater than Caesar? Who created the heavens and the earth but God? And who rose from the dead but Jesus Christ? Believe him and do his will and keep his commandments and love what he loves. Blessed are you poor and persecuted for righteousness sake. Yours is the kingdom of God. You should just arrest him now. He only speaks his mind. He's harmless. <laughs> I doubt the proconsul would see it as such. In Rome, they are crucifying these types. Or feeding them to the lions. Perhaps we should do the same. 